Hello, and welcome to In the Court of the Winter Nave. Um, last week technically was Live at the Orpheum, so if you want to see the review of that, we review that when it came out and it's on the playlist if you want to watch that. So today I'm doing the 2015 Tour Box. So last week I did the 2014 Tour Box, and in a couple of weeks I'll be doing the 2016 Tour Box. Mm. These boxes are truly awesome, they are fantastic. I think this is the best one, I reckon. We are truly the most spoilt fans of any band, this is just, just great. There's so much of it coming out all at once. I can't cope with the so much King Crimson. It's interesting that there is a track parallel. There's a structure which they follow. Uh, the liner notes are quite good. They're about the, the sort of the jamming and the writing process, which is quite interesting. Not, the, not quite the usual thing. But I mean, the thing about this era, the Mark, I keep calling it Mark 7, isn't it? It's like Mark 9 or 10 or something. Mark 9, actually. Uh, it's the 7 piece. It's different from every other era because the audience interaction is different. They're not trying to challenge the audience with, with new material. They're, actually giving them, supposedly giving them what they want, and there's so much sort of goodwill in the room, it's, it's so different. It's not difficult for the audience, it's not, and maybe it's easy for band members as well, and it just makes people happy, and you know. Pat Masolato said when they went to the final 2014 rehearsal, you know, Robert, you're going to make a lot of people very happy, because, really? They're playing all that stuff? Oh my god, and it sounds that good? A lot of this stuff by, by, by you know, the seven piece and the eight piece, is better than the original performances, you know. I, I genuinely believe that, it is wonderful. What a way to go out on, if indeed it's the end, probably isn't, but yeah. I mean, they've now been touring more than any, in, consistently, more than any other lineup. And you know, maybe that difference is down to these rules. People make light of Fripp's over intellectualising of everything, you know, that's what Frame by Frame is about. But it's, maybe that's the reason, that's the solution, you know, making Crimson bring joy to us all, including me, meaning Fripp. If you don't want to play a part, that's fine, give it to someone else, there's enough of us, there's seven of them. All the music is new, wherever it was, whenever it was written, that's key. If you don't know your note, hit C sharp. If you don't know the time, play in five. <laughs> or seven. Not four though, no. If you don't know what to play, get more gear. If you still don't know what to play, play nothing. That's fine. You don't have to play, it's seven of them. And with that, Fripp solved whatever problem there is and made something wonderful, I think. That's the key to stopping them turning into yes. Okay, for the first time, they're now an old band and they're playing all the hits. For the first time ever, you know. Um, but they're not turning into yes. They're not just churning it out and it's not as good as it used to be. Some of it's better than it used to be, you know. The thing about let us enjoy playing, it's not like having to play roundabout with obvious no enthusiasm, they're just playing it, you know. All the music is new. These are the notes, play them. You know, it doesn't have to be old or new, it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't mean anything. It's just notes. But they, they couldn't have done that if they'd, they'd been doing this for 40 years of playing the old stuff. That's the point. They can only do it now for it to work. And work it does. So yeah, track one. Windy in. The wind extract again, it's the same track in all the boxes it opens with, that's great. And the second track, this time, is the instrumental Epitaph. So we did instrumental Talk to the Wind last time, instrumental Epitaph this time. Um, I actually played the, the wind extracts back to back to see if they're the same, they are the same. I mean, the, 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 the jump into that is less seamless than uh, I Talk to the Wind. Um, there's lots of clarity about the vocals, there's so much clarity you can hear what's going on, which is, uh, which is the point, it's great. Uh, track three is Cat Food. Very groovy. It's the instrumental Cat Food. Lots of pinky guitar, much more noticeable, uh, so same kind of thing. Uh, track four is Bolero. This is the Levin version of Bolero, so that's great, um, which I hadn't heard until the 40th anniversary box, because I didn't have the frame by frame box set, which is where it originally appeared whilst there was litigation ongoing with uh, Gordon Haskell. Uh, it is fantastic out of context, it really is. You don't have to sit through this 20 minute mishmash of things. It is the best bit of the Lizard Suite, not just because everyone says it is, I think, I think it really is, it is wonderful. Uh, track 5, Islands Extract with, with Oboe. Uh, really nice Oboe bit, really good. Then we've got track 6, is A Peacemaking Stint and Rolls. Um, and that is actually the Lark's Tongues one bit with the 71 band, it's that thing. Which they didn't call Lark's Tongues, naughtily. Track 7, uh, this is for explaining LTA Part 2 to the current lineup, I think. And they play a clean Fripp and Jacko, and I think a bit of Levin, to show the rest of the band how it goes on clean guitars. That's, that's great to hear. And they said that's the mellow version. <laughs> so that's, that's just awesome. Track 8 is Lock Stongs and Ashby Part 2. Um, it's, that's the Ashby Part version. Track 9 is Fracture. This is the night after the 1st of April show I did review. So it's the one after that, which is on the Starless Box but not on the Collector's Club. 74, I should say. Or is it 73? 74. Yeah, 74. Um, track 10. One more Red Nightmare. Guitars extract. It's just the riff. 
Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Uh, and then, one more Red Nightmare. Actually, it's the Orpheum version. So it says 2014 rehearsals and live. This one's live, it's just the Orpheum version. Track 12, Elephant Talk, 12 inch mix. And again, at this point, I'd never heard that until the uh, On The Road box, because I hadn't been buying the 40th versions of things because I was waiting for the big box. There's not going to be a big box of Islands and uh, Poseidon though, so I need to get those, it has to be said. There's a couple of cool sort of fills on stick and things like that, obviously it's a 12 inch version. Much longer instrumental bits, and I think it's a different vocal take as well. So yeah, Elephant Talk. Mm. Track 13, Absent Lovers. Hang on, there isn't a song called Absent Lovers. Direct reference to um, On The Road. This is great because it's um, instrumental take, it's really quite different to Neil and Jack and me. Uh, before there's lots of interlocking guitars on there. Um, so no gamelan, which I now know how you pronounce, um, and loads of fruitronics. Mm. Um, I mean that already spoiled the On The Road box a bit because that's a highlight of the On The Road box sadly, but hey there you go, it's really good. Uh, then we have track 14 is SF Soundcheck Extract. Uh, very 80s gamelan, ironically. Uh, I think it's it's an instrumental meltdown, actually. I think, but yeah, really good. And track 15 is Lark 3 and Sleepless. So, this was the early version of, of um, the Lark 3 stuff where actually Sleepless and Lark, the Lark 3 things were actually part of one piece early on. It's funny how the, the, those two bits were both together and they fit, they fit so well you'd never think of it. Fripp and Baloo, two things there, I suppose, which were eventually separated. Um, the 80s production grates a bit after the wonderful sound of modern recording, but that's the nature of this kind of box. I think the ending is actually better than Locks 3. The ending of Locks 3 on the album is a bit, a bit disappointing, it's a bit of a low point. Uh, but there's no frip, it just goes on and on and on, and, and it's great. Interesting. So yeah, that's this one. This two, Jurassic Thrack edit, an edit of Jurassic Thrack, we like that. From the, you know, the documentary sessions disc from the Thrack box. With an alternate riff. I assume he's on the Thrax Sessions, I can't remember. Um, it's a little bit like Oyster Soup, actually, that riff, interestingly. And then you realise it's actually just Fripp just playing notes, and it's it's actually an improvisation, but it's the, obviously the double tracked Fripp <laughs> effect. You think it's actually a written riff, and it's not. Um, track two is the Hellhounds of Cream. We like the Hellhounds of Cream. Uh, missing Orpheum track. This was on the picture disc, which I didn't realise. I didn't look at the track list of the pictures, not knowing it. it had Schizoid Man on it, and this on it, and I think Light of Day on it. Which is okay now, because we've had various other live things. That must have been infuriating at the time, I'm glad I didn't know. It, it seems relaxed. You know, the Orpheum stuff seems relaxed compared to the 2015 stuff and the 2016 stuff. Maybe that's the mix, I know people moan about the mix, blah blah blah. But also, I think they just got better, I think. The real intense stuff really started in 2015 when they were really letting go. It was great. I mean, it, it, could, it could simply be the way it's recorded. The technology they used to record and they changed it. From Kensington Thrack, this one. Vroom, it doesn't say, it just says Vroom. Uh, which is quite an early performance on the Thrackbox. Um, Code of Marine 475. It's actually one of the last times they played London, of course. I mean, the last time was 2000. Apologies to Londoners, but I don't blame them for not playing London. Miserable place. Too busy. Track 5, Projection from Project 4, yes. Uh, this is from Roar of P4, which I really like. Um, that and Mask are the ones, I think. Uh, Locks 4, and The Construction of Light is one track. This is fantastic. Again, I think I said this last week, a tea coal box, a, you know, a construction box, a light box, would be awesome. You know, they don't need to compromise and do a 2000, 2003 box. They can stretch this out over two years, you know. The 2000 box could be really good. Although, to be fair, it's a lot of work for David Singleton to the Bon Sound Sticks, and I think they're going to have to do another one of these as well, 2017 tour. <laughs> so it's a bit much. But you never know. That's what we would like. Track 7 is Sustains from Project 3 doing Sustains. It's Project 3, but it's actually from the Construction Light Sessions, it's just Blue's not there. And it's one of those things, well, how did they decide not to use that? With Construction Light, they, they seem to drop all the project stuff, just the, just use some of the riffs um, for the album. How did they make that decision? It's, it's just hard to understand. You know, Sustains could have opened the album for Construction Light, it would have made it broader and, and all that stuff, you know. Track 8 is Power to Believe 2 demo. Ooh. It's the marimba bit with the vocals. Um, she carries me, you know. To happy with what well, you have to be happy with outtake technically. Then we have the Power to Believe 2, and it's the Milan version. Now, did I say that was the best version? I might have said that was the best version. Perhaps it is the best version, and maybe they agree. And now I do say it because they said it. Track 10, Ex Uno Patre, 2004 lineup. Very world music y, interestingly. It's like they'd, they'd, they'd gone back to that and away from the heaviness. Funky Peter Gabriel type stuff. Um, it doesn't really go anywhere, so maybe there was nothing 
coming out of those jams and that's why they never made a deep material, maybe. Uh, track 11, Light of Day. Alternative, alternative mix of the Light of Day. I'm not sure about the difference, maybe there's more drums. Someone can tell tell me. Um, and then we've got track 12 is Baba Boom Boom. 2008 rehearsal. They can make some sort of Lost Crim album from all this stuff. It would be great. 2004 and 2008, um, bits of Project 6. It's very baboon, obviously. I mean, maybe all that stuff would go on a, a Power to Believe box. Is it? Because they'd have that as well, and then it'd be two boxes, and you see it. Yeah, I hope so. Track 13, Attack Thrack, edit. Uh, we like Attack Thrack. I mean, it, there's an argument that Thrack Attack is so ridiculous and over the top, and Attack Thrack is more sensible. Um, so they're different things. But I, I like Attack Thrack, I think it's great, and I've listened to it quite a lot. I've probably listened to it more than Thrack Attack, even though it's not been out very long. But unfortunately, this. It's just the riff. <laughs> so there's no attacker track on there, it's just the track riff. Never mind. Into 21st Century Schizoid Man. This was the first version by the, the seven piece I'd heard, so that was one of the main reasons for getting this. I got this at the concert. And we gave it away, didn't we? In a competition as well. We ended up buying three copies. So that was only on the picture disc, not on Orpheum. It isn't actually at the Orpheum concert though, it's actually from a different concert. This is the one, it's got new lyrics from Peter Sinfield, which he, he later on dropped. He went back to the original lyrics, but that's, that's interesting, trying to make it up to date, I think. Um, of course, we have Gavin Harrison's solo in, in, in the middle of the section as well. I mean, at that point, that might have been the best version of 21st Century, century Skits of Mine. You know, it's, it's good stuff. That kind of stuff is so perfect for the seven piece. So, yeah, see you next week. What well, for what would be Live at Toronto, but we've already done Live at Toronto. So next week is actually Radical Action. And... Rather than, uh, you know, at this point we're nearly at the end, it's tempting just to whiz through it, but I'm going to try and do some sort of comparison. So we've got some sort of useful information about the difference between Toronto and, and uh, Radical Action. So, see you then.